here what I'm going to show you, as I said, is ServiceNow with the TFS. And what ServiceNow is, is it's actually a help, is can be used as a help desk uh, incident system. And it also has a lot of other functionality behind it. But that's what I'm going to show today is this um, help desk escalation pattern. So I'll start in ServiceNow as if I'm actually uh, a help desk staff, I guess. So I've got my list of incidents here which came in from users. So this might have been by email, by phone, however this really happens. So I could be looking down this list and I could do my daily kind of activity and I go through and look at this one and be like, okay, oops. If I actually go and look at the actual incident, I can see, well, this guy's monitor is broken. Um, but we did go ahead and actually fix this. Um, I talked to him yesterday, so I'll actually add a comment to actually send this back to him. And then we'll actually just resolve this because um, so I'll go through kind of the process of resolving a ticket. And all that information was sent back to the customer. So now though, I get down to the next one in my list for the day. And I have a look at this. And I realize that this actually seems a like a problem with our software, our internal software. And our development team needs to be aware of this. So I could add a comment to the customer, or back to uh, my user. But first, I'm actually going to go in and create a problem. So ServiceNow has the idea of problems, which can be linked up with your um, incidents as well that came in from your customers. So I could go in here and say, I've got a new problem. Uh, login page is not working. And I'll put some details here. And then set up any of the fields that I actually need to along the way. So we'll submit this. And then we'll actually update this record here. And if I actually go back to this incident, um, we'll now see that here it's actually linked up with this problem. Oops, with this problem that I actually created. And I could actually go to the problems view in ServiceNow here and refresh this list that I have. And you'll know that you'll notice that we have this login page not working anymore. So, <coughs> excuse me, with <coughs> kind of your standard practices, a lot of the times the developers would either be forced to log in here to ServiceNow to be able to actually maintain this list of problems, or they may get an email from the support team here and create kind of a duplicate uh, within TFS. But with TestOp Sync actually running in place, if I now kind of switch to being a developer, I'll flip over here to my TFS instance. I have this list of items that have come from customers from ServiceNow. And if I refresh this, you'll see that now we actually immediately have this new defect that I can start working on. I can see that it's going to be a high priority item because the login page isn't working. So I can actually start trying to fix it. So I can be a, maybe I've actually gone through my development process. I can say this is now fixed. And I'll mark this as a result. And we'll save this. So now this has actually been tracked here in TFS. You see that it's marked as resolved. And again, in a traditional sense, you may be logging directly into ServiceNow, or if you actually create this item in TFS, you'll now need to go somehow notify the people um, that are using ServiceNow so that they can contact the customer. Again, with TaskTop Sync, if I actually switch back to ServiceNow, if I'm uh, one of these help desk users, I could actually be coming in here on my daily basis looking at all the problems that I've reported to see what the updates are. And if I actually go into this one here, I can be looking down the list and see, oh, this is now fixed. You can see that comment was synchronized across. I can also see that the defect status is actually marked as a result. So what that tells me is like, okay, well, we can actually go and mark this problem as actually closed complete. And what I can do is I could actually follow this link that was created automatically um, to that original incident. Um, so then I can come in here and I can actually respond directly to the customer. So I could add a note in saying, please let me, please let me know. And then I can send this note back to the customer. So you get this very real time collaboration between the different teams. Um, which is really helping out your customers in the end because you're actually able to respond to them quicker, be able to get back to them um, with details directly from engineering without losing information uh, via emails or via all these 
kind of brittle point-to-point -point solutions. So all of this is managed with Tastop Sync. So if I switch to Tastop Sync Studio, the first thing that I'm showing here is actually just a bit of a visualization of the landscape of the synchronization that I have set up. So for the case of this demo, I just have a simple synchronization set up between ServiceNow uh, problems and TFS defects. If I actually go and open up um, kind of the mapping, so what a mapping is, is it's actually a connection to a server and a project and a type, and how you want to synchronize those two different items between um, these two different systems. So really, once you actually go and set up a connection actually to these servers, um, you select what your project is and what type you actually want to synchronize. Then Tastop Sync is able to actually go out. Um, it pit and generates what we call a schema. And it's actually available here to you as a part of this editor. And it shows you all the different fields that are available for the item that you're actually synchronizing. As well as we have extra information about the different types. And if it's something like a single select field, we'll also have a listing of the values that may be associated with it. So what the schema really does is it allows you, allows us to build a really easy mapping editor. So here um, is where you actually set up what attributes you want to synchronize between the two systems to fit whatever business needs you might have. So you can see if we look at something like this simple summary to summary or short description to summary, uh, there's this drop down that allows you just to kind of go in here and pick out which of the fields you want to synchronize between the two. So you don't need to go try and figure out the IDs, make any guesses. It's really simple to say, I want to synchronize the short description. Do I want it to synchronize both directions only one way? And to what other field? Additionally, there's this caster. And what a caster is, is it's a data transformation. So what you see here, um, a simple string field, we don't actually need to do any data transformations. We're just going to send that straight across. However, if I look at something like the description, TFS actually uses an HTML format for the description so that there's rich text, whereas ServiceNow actually uses a plain text format. So what I've done is I've actually set it up to use a wiki markup um, on the ServiceNow side um, to HTML so that if someone actually goes and adds some formatting um, on the TFS side, some of that information will flow back over to ServiceNow and you won't be losing any data um, because that rich formatting that people added generally is actually conveying something to your users along the way. Additionally, we have other casters um, such as value mapping, which is where you would map values of something like a single select field where they may not actually match. As you can see here, ServiceNow has five different values for the priority, whereas TFS only has four. And the interesting thing that you see here is that I will actually map, let's say, very high to one and urgent to one. Um, and that's actually an okay thing because Tastop Sync actually has this ability to do field level change detection and conflict resolution. So when a change comes in from, when Tastop Sync detects a change from one of the servers, it's actually able to figure out which fields changed and only synchronize that field to the other system. Which means that if someone here actually comes in and changes it to four, or let's say five urgent on the ServiceNow side, it'll go across as the highest priority on TFS. However, we're not going to detect the change um, on the TFS side, so we're not going to bounce that value back to four very high. So it really ensures that um, the data that you set is actually correct, and it works very different than most of the batch synchronizations that could exist out there as well. Additionally, this field level change detection allows us to do field level conflict resolution and conflict detection. So if someone changes the priority on one side and the description and let's say the summary on the other, then we're actually not going to detect that as a conflict uh, when we go to synchronize because we see which fields change and then we're actually able to properly merge the records and submit it to either end. If someone actually goes ahead and changes, let's say, the priority on both sides, then of course we do run into a conflict and there's different policies that can be put in place for the entire mapping or even for the single attribute that's under synchronization to say whether you need manual intervention or whether one of the two sides wins based on your business rules. So as you can see from this, you're able to really set up your synchronization to match whatever your business needs are um, to suit connecting your different tools within your software lifecycle.